Well, shalom, shalom. I'm Barbara, and I'm always short and sweet. Pagan moon god symbols. Well, what does the Bible say? Uh, humans have tended to worship anything that seems greater than them. The, the moon worship and the moon goddess worship has been around way back since the beginning of time, actually. Uh, Deuteronomy 4.19 says, When you look up at the sky and see the sun, the moon, and the stars, and all the heavenly array, do not be enticed into bowing down to them. So some cultures have attributed divine qualities to the sun, moon, and stars and built altars to them. And the crescents have been appearing all the way back since the Tower of Babel. And here is a picture here, the Sumerian uh, goddess and god. Uh, the crescent usually is associated with the moon god, Sin, or Nana, and the star with Ishtar, Venus, and often placed alongside the sun disk, which is Shemash. And this is a picture of the ceiling depicting the Neil Sumerian king, Ibai, or Sin, seated with the star of Dingar and the crescent adjacent to him. Here's another picture, an ancient picture of depiction of the emblems of Ishtar, or Venus, Sin, the moon, and Shemash, the sun. So uh, if you remember, we've done uh, quite a few videos about uh, the Queen of Heaven and Nimrod. And here are some of the names that they go by. And Nimrod goes by Shemash, the sun god, and Baal, Moloch, Ishtar goes by Venus and Dinah. All their names way back to Babylon mean the same people. So the lunar deities are also very important archetypes in the modern pagan movement and Wicca. Uh, the male lunar gods are like Sin from Mesopotamia, Mani, the German tribes, uh, the Japanese, the Inuit, and the Hindu god Chandra. Uh, then Sin, Nana, the male god of the moon, is uh, from the Mesopotamian religion in the God of the Moon. And he was the father of the sun, supposedly, Shemash, and then other myths of Ishtar, and they created a triad uh, between the moon, sun, and stars. Selene, the mother goddess linked to the full moon, uh, she's widely worshipped by pagans today. Chang'o, that's the Chinese goddess of uh, the full moon. Dinah, you've heard of that Roman goddess, and that's the same as Samarimus and Ishtar. And, and uh, she's also known as Luna, the goddess of the moon. And Ishtar, also the daughter of the moon. Here's Selena again, a mother goddess linked to the full moon, and she is worshipped by pagans still today. And there's the Strong's number for Selene. Chandra is the god of the full moon of Hinduism, and they are, uh, they still worship the full moon, and Chandra is also known as Soma, the Hindu god of the moon associated with night, plants, and vegetation. And the full moon in Hinduism is also associated with the new age. Uh, Hinduism plays a major role in the New Age religion and is catching on quickly. Take any element of New Age and you'll find a corresponding element in Hinduism. In fact, take any religion and you'll find its corresponding element in Hinduism. And so they all use the moon uh, as part of their worship. Uh, here's another one that you're all familiar with, the crescent. It's usually associated with Islam and regarded as its symbol. It's also found on Islamic buildings. And the symbol of Islam is the moon, uh, the crescent moon there with the star. The monstrants are uh, usually elaborate in design, and these are carried by the priests, by the Catholic priests. Uh, the monstrance is a decorative circular stand constructed of metal designed to hold the consecrated host. The host itself, the wafer, 
that they say represents the body of Christ is displayed in a glass enclosed centerpiece called the Luna. Okay, so here we know this is all the sun rays, the sun disk, and look in the center is the moon, the moon disk. So this is in all their symbolisms when they do the Eucharist. Uh, the host itself, the wafer, is displayed in a glass enclosed centerpiece, right there it is, called the Luna. And what is Luna? The name of Earth's moon, Roman mythology, the sister of Aura and Sol, the goddess of the moon, equivalent to the Greek Selene. The monstrance is used for displaying the host, as what we've been talking about, and it's a vessel used in the Roman Catholic Church, and it is for the Eucharist. And see, there it is again. There's the moon. We know these are the sun rays, the sun, and then there's the moon. And we did a whole video about this. Uh, the Catholic Eucharist is a ritual to Baal, so I hope you'll go and watch that too. The moon is one of the great lights that Elohim made. He assigned the moon for signs and seasons, uh, like it says in Genesis 1. And Elohim said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, days and years. So the sun, moon, and stars were to help mankind mark the passing of time and to know the time of the appointed festivals of Jehovah. In Deuteronomy 4.19, again, it says, When you look up to the sky and see the sun, moon, and stars, all the heavenly array, do not be enticed to bowing down and serving them. And we know they have been made into a lot of images and worshipped. And it all starts with paganism, and it's in all the, many, all of the churches today. So he says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, Hosea 4, 6. So like if this is a blessing to you, and please share it with your friends that love Yeshua, and I'll leave all these links below for you to study it out for yourself. He says, come out of her, my people, Babylon. All this stuff started in Babylon. It's still in our world today. Come out of her that you receive not of her sins and her plagues. So remember, I'm short and sweet, and I'll see you next time, yeah, willing. Thank you for being here today.